Hi, I'm Davina DeCampo. Welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Davina DeCampo, welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. How are you today? I'm really good, thank you. How are you? I'm really good. I'm so excited to be talking to you today. Before we get into everything that you've worked on, when you were growing up, were you always inspiring to be a singer? You've got the most incredible operatic voice. Yeah, I was I was really, really um I don't I don't I think it was just something that I was gonna end up doing. Mm. Um like even at school, one of my first memories is being in uh re- in re- yeah, probably reception or in the first, you know, the very first year, and we're in assembly and the head teacher points to me and says, Oh, we've got a Pavarotti in the audience. <laughs> um, you know, which is I don't know who Pavarotti is. I'm free. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, Pavarotti didn't appear in too much children's TV, right? <laughs> no, not really, no. <laughs> Should have, though. It would have been incredible. I mean, I'd have loved it, yeah. Would have been rocking those nursery rhymes. Yeah, absolutely. Three Listen. blind mice. <laughs> exactly. So my most important question in this interview is, can you tell me, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants, SpongeBob SquarePants, SpongeBob SquarePants. That's who lives in a pineapple under the sea. You are 100% correct. That was amazing. Thank you. <laughs> so the reason I've asked you that, if anyone's completely baffled by what's going on at this point, you're playing Plankton in the SpongeBob musical. Can you tell me how you first got involved with it? Well, I um I got a call from my manager um asking would I be interested in um reading for the part of Plankton. Yeah. And so I went away and I um you know did the research, found out I'd already known that the show had been a, a massive, massive, you know, a smash success in America. Uh, it had absolutely lit Broadway on fire. Yeah. Um so I knew that it had been a successful show, but I didn't know all that much about it. So I went off, did my research. And actually, for me, Plankton is one of the most interesting characters in the show because he's driven by all of these different things. Um, so the fact that they were interested in hearing me read for it rather than for something else um. I thought, well, actually, that's really interesting. Um, so, yeah, I was overjoyed that they'd um, that they'd considered me for that role, um, and and that was the start of the process. So it was yeah. reading uh, a couple of a couple of scenes, and um, they asked me to do the song, and I did the start of the song. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. Because <laughs> the full song is, um, it would take some work before you could just launch into it. There is this speed rap that happens in the middle of the, the track that I sing. And um, yes, I am not a speed rapper as part of my skill set. However, <laughs> now... There's another thing to add to the list. I'm so excited to see this. Can you tell me, are the cast doing impressions of their animated counterparts or do you get to bring your own interpretation to the character? It's a, There's a conversation uh, around that. So there's a little bit of both, you know, because it's not, we're not, it's not like going to see the tweenies or something where it's going to be those suits on stage. You know, it's going to be yeah. some... It's human beings on stage with some kind of anthropomorphic elements in there. Um, so there, it's not exactly like you would expect from the animation because it's not a literal sponge on stage. It's yeah. a human being. Um, but there are definitely um, elements that have been taken and developed from, from the uh, cartoon. Absolutely. Amazing. And what can you tell me about the plot? Okay, so there is a a volcano is about to erupt in Bikini Bottom and wipe everybody from existence. Um, yeah, SpongeBob, of course, is the hero. So 
So he's decided that uh, the the best thing to do is save the town to stop this from happening. And Plankton uh, would rather um, get everybody in one place so that he can uh, foil that. He he wants to foil um, he wants to foil SpongeBob's plan to save everybody, and instead he wants them all to love his chum burgers and move to Chumville. So it's the 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 rest of the show. That's your kind of premise. That's your starting point. And the rest of the show is where do we end up? You know, I won't tell you what happens in the end. Well, you will during the production when I see it. Hopefully, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> you will see what happens. I've got tickets. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you tell me how much work goes into the production? How long have you all been rehearsing and putting it together before you get on stage for that first time? Yeah, so the the full cast have been in rehearsal for four weeks. Oh wow! Um, wow. I was late. I was the new girl in town, um, so uh, I got two weeks, which was just enough time <laughs> um, to insert myself in. And then we're in tech now for a week, so it's five weeks in total for production, um, getting everything ready. And then we open uh, in Southampton. New Southampton yeah. Mayflower. Yeah which I'm really excited about. I'm really excited for it too. And this musical has the most ridiculous list of song contributors I think I've ever seen in any theatrical production. Can you tell me some of the people that have contributed? Yeah, um, Yolanda Adams, David Bowie, um, Sarah Bareilles, John Legend, The Plain White Tees. Uh, it, I mean, the list just goes on and on yeah, and Cindy on. Cindy Lauper. I mean, Cindy Lauper. Cindy Lauper. Iconic. And and the thing with that is, um, you would feel then like the music wouldn't stick together. You know that it wouldn't make sense as a whole. Yeah. But I don't know what magic they have worked on this, but somehow everything seems to uh it's really cohesive you know the music is really cohesive mm. and it really draws the story out as well um it's i don't know how they've done it but it's so so clever what's happened is is really brilliant and that's you know that's what made it such an amazing success in america um, yeah, of course was that it's it is just the book and the music are just so great um, and that's I think that's one of the things that you really need for a, a musical to be great. It's a really good book and really great music. And it has both. So have you got a favorite scene or song to perform in the musical? Uh, my favorite scene to perform is um there's a scene which we're we're kind of colloquially terming big guy, um, which is between Plankton and Karen. And you you get to understand part of what it is that's made plankton the way that he is in that mm. scene you know there's little nuggets of it all the way through with plankton which is what i mean about it makes him a really interesting character to play um but in that scene you really sort of see what his driving force is you know his fears and his worries you see all of that stuff um and it's funny you know it's just really funny the whole thing is hilarious <laughs> I remember when it was on in Broadway, I wished I could have seen it. And I'm so happy mm. it's going to be on in the UK. It very much doesn't seem like it's just for kids. It's something for the entire family to enjoy. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's Even though it's an American production, it mm. is in the best um, tradition of UK theatre that there is, you know, that little nudge, nudge, wink, wink for the adults. And the kids will just be entranced by the colour and the comedy and the glorious singing and music. Um, yeah, it works on lots of levels, the show. Now, the, the show is currently touring till September. I understand that Gareth Gates and Tom Reed Wilson, who I love, are going to be alternating as Squidward in different locations for it as well. Have you had the chance to rehearse with them both? Yes, yes, I have. I've been very lucky and I've been able to play um, opposite both of them I'm not in very many scenes with them so I actually get to watch them work more Amazing. than uh, more than acting it, uh, opposite them which is really really lovely it's mm. I mean that's one of my favorite things is um, being able to watch people 
make choices and test things out in the room. And sure. they're both really brilliant. They bring different qualities to um, the role of Squidward, but they're both really, really brilliant. You've also starred in Chicago and Hedwig and the Angry Inch as well. Are there any other musicals you'd love to be a part of? There are so many musicals I want to do. I really want to do Rocky Horror. Um, I want to do Chitty City Bang Bang. I want to do Priscilla. I'd love to do Cabaret. Um, I'd, I'd like to go back to Chicago as well. I had the most wonderful time, and I think it's one of my favourite all-time shows, actually. I really love it. Um, yeah, there's tons that I want to do. I'm not finished yet, so... I love that, and I can't wait to see you in absolutely everything. You appeared on The Voice and auditioned for a number of judges, mm. but then in another TV show, all together now, you were one of 100 judges, and you're all kind of stacked in these boxes on top of each other. But can you tell me how everyone gets up there? Please tell me there's a trampoline. <laughs> I wish there was a trampoline. That would have been great fun, and somebody would have just thrown me my heels. Otherwise, I'd have gone through it, wouldn't I? I'd gone straight through the trampoline. No, unfortunately for that, there were just stairs either end. Stairs. But it was like the Muppets, wasn't it? We looked like... Um, do, 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 That was great fun, that show, though, because it's so... I'm, you know, most of us in this industry are working so much all the time that you never really get to meet anybody else or see what they do. Yeah. And that was an opportunity to meet a 100 other artists who are all working in music in one way or another. And, um, and they were just brilliant. It was just so much fun. Um, yeah, and I've made some real friends from that show as well. People Amazing. who I keep in contact with and I, you know, I try and make sure I, if I'm in their area of the country, I make sure I, I meet up with them and we have lunch or something. It's, I love that. It was really a great show. So you were also in the first season of RuPaul's Drag Race UK. There were some amazing guests there, Andrew Garfield, Maisie Williams Andrew as well. Andrew Garfield. Did you get the chance to meet any of the judges or literally just see them when you're going out on that catwalk? Yeah, we literally just saw them when we were going out on that catwalk. Mm. Apart from um, Jerry, who came yeah. back and saw something, um, the rest of us didn't didn't really get to see anybody. Mm. Um but, I, you know, I don't mind that because you're there in a, a judging capacity. Yeah. And I it, it kind of, when people, when that line gets blurred, you can make a sort of emotional relationship with somebody pretty quickly. You know, you just get a feeling for people. And then sometimes it skews your judging. You know, you're not judging purely on what they put on the runway. Sometimes it's about how you felt about that person in that moment rather than what they're doing on stage at that particular time um so you know i was i was all right but i didn't i would have quite enjoyed meeting andrew garfield the 31st of march is trans day of visibility have you got any messages for the trans community or why it's important to be an ally absolutely look we're all going through it at the moment and bigots don't care what color of queer you are when they're kicking your head in um so it's now more important than ever to be visible and and be um, be a human. Just be a human. It's very easy to see what's happening in the media, see what happens on Twitter and feel like, oh, the whole world is against me. And it's not. The polls show it time and time again that actually the majority of people are supportive of trans people and trans rights. And it's, it is just a very vocal minority. And fingers crossed what's happened in Australia, that is heralding a shift in this discourse. In this discourse. Because, you know, we all know as people who are marginalised, anybody who comes at you and just goes, well, I just have legitimate concerns. They don't have legitimate concerns. What they have is a bigotry. Exactly. And can you tell me a fun fact about your hobby, a party trick, something like that? Ooh. I, I do I have a party trick? No, I tell everything, everybody, everything. Anyway, I'm a very <laughs> open book. I really, really enjoy playing computer games. Um, What's your favourite reason? Moment? Lots of people don't kind of see that with me. I'm uh, like I'm a bit old school, so mm. um, I really enjoy playing Pokemon. I've really enjoyed that. It's just like a <laughs> switch off and go collect them all. And then I really enjoy Witcher. I really like those games where you 
uh, like the RPG. Yeah. We're going to have to play some games sometime. Okay, I'm up for this. <laughs> Can you tell me what you might be working on next? Are we going to get any more music, perhaps? Yeah, that's my plan, is that over the next six months, I'm going to be writing some stuff while I'm on tour um, and uh, getting my ducks in a row for that. And it will probably be a kind of musical-based um, offering. Um, so I already have some stuff, which was kind of put on the back burner and then it's just been like you know busy um but yeah that that's my plan is to um is to bring some of that stuff that I've already got and then meld it in with with some of the musical theater stuff very exciting can't wait to hear and see everything that you're working on next and finally if you've got any messages for people watching the Sarah O'Connell show and your fans around the world Oh, just love each other. Love each other. And we're here, all here for such a short amount of time. Try and make sure you have a good one. That's very well said. Well, Davina <laughs> DeCampo, thank you so much for coming on the Sarah O'Connell show today. It's been a joy talking to you and I cannot wait to see SpongeBob the musical. Fabulous. Thank you so much, darling. Thank you so much for your time and thank you to everybody watching at home. Be sure to share, subscribe, give this video a big thumbs up and leave lots of lovely comments. I'll see you all again soon for another episode of the Sarah O'Connell Show. Bye. Thank you, darling. Bye, love. Bye.